Hey there, you can probably see um, I've started work on this little fella. Let's see if we can get him into focus and get some more light on him. So it's just these lights a bit. Okay, you can still see that yellow uh, old glue there. Uh, what I've done, I've uh, put his coattails on. I'm going to have to tidy up that line. I've used some paper for. Um, Let's see if I can uh, do it that way. Paper for uh, the straps across his chest, that uh, all the equipment on the back. So most of this line and, and this other stuff will be hidden anyway. Okay, so that's that. I've tidied him up as well as I could. These are the uh, instructions. Let's, uh, let's go back. Right, right. They don't follow on here, it's so fairly simple. Um, I've done sort of do that if you like, and I'm preparing this the this straps at the back. That's for the spare axe head, that's for his uh, uh, bayonet and sword. I think he also maybe has some other straps here, but he'll have this uh, pack backpack on. Um, doesn't show any other straps. Well, it does there. There's a couple more there. I'd love to put those two on as well. Okay. Uh, so anyway, that's the instructions. Um, I've taken the flash off this as far as I can. It's okay. The axe as well. A little bit of work on that. Mostly though, I've done some work on. Um, This is his head, okay. You might be able to notice I've um, let's put some putty on his beard and his sideburns to make his beard look a bit more uh, uh, rough. It was a bit smooth before. Mind you, he was supposed to be on parade, so probably would in reality be smooth, but I thought for the model it would look better if it was a bit rough. And I've also, this is his bare skin. Put some putty on here and roughed it up a bit. So if you put these two together, I'll probably still do a bit more work on this. Okay. Be a bit more texture, yeah. Hopefully that'll look reasonable. Okay, so I've done all that. That's sort of ready to go. The next thing I'm thinking about doing is this. Um, get that into focus. This uh, cord that goes across is a uh, bare skin. I know I was calling it a helmet in the other video, but. Um, Anyway, and assembling the rest of this in his head and put that all on a little separate spike and paint it up. And um, have I done anything else for now? I'm um, just looking around. Oh yeah, I've done this. I've, right, let's try that again. I've cut his hands off, both arms, that's one. That's the, uh, that's the other one. They just looked a bit gross. I don't, I don't think I could have worked with them. And I have these two. The placements. Oops. Pardon me. They're a bit hard to hold on to and show you on the camera. So I intend to replace, or well now I can just put those on the, his arms. Those are resin hands, by the way, from uh, um, Hornet models. And um, they seem to fit okay. He's, um, if you remember the pose of this figure, if I can, let me just get the box out and I'll show you again.
This is him here in the middle of the sapper. You can see uh, this arm is like this, holding onto the axe over his shoulder, and the other arm is uh, sort of by his side, maybe leaning against a musket. And this is a uh, view from the back. There's the axe over his shoulder. Okay, and um, other things. This is a, the grenade for his uh, top of his head. And there's that big long cord. Now that's, there's no way that I know of that you can just uh, put that on the figure. Yeah, I'm gonna have to break it, cut it up. Because, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I could, I could heat it up maybe, melt it, then it would become uh, pliable, but I don't think it'll work. So I'll probably just end up cutting it into smaller pieces and sticking them all on and then uh, filling in any gaps. Anyway, that's as far, as far as I've got today. Um, I'll see you in the next one. Okay, take care. Bye. Okay, back again. Here's the head of the... Um, Little French sapper fella from Hysterex. You'll see that, um, as well as a. Uh, just put this light down a bit so we get a bit better light, maybe. Got a light over there as well. Yeah, as well as, um, <clears throat> excuse me, doing up his beard and uh, adding some texture to his bare skin, I've, uh, I did try and use the, um, supplied piece of plastic that was meant to be for the cords. Uh, I chopped it up into bits and uh, stuck it around his uh, bare skin, but it just looked like rubbish. So I've taken it off and I've used a piece of this florist wire, which is not ideal. Here's the here's the stuff. It's very cheap. It's a, I'll just show you. It's pretty flexible, you know, you can bend it fairly easily and it, it stays in whatever position you put it in. But it's not, it's not great. Uh, what's going to be the real test though? I mean, it looks all right, um, as far as I could tell at the moment. What's going to be the real test though is uh, how's it going to paint up? Uh, I'm going to try using, not that one. I'm going to try using, oops, pardon me, camera. This, this surfacing product here to um, paint it up because that'll uh, hopefully give a better finish than the uh, um, Vallejo primers I've been using, which um, just don't seem to be that good. I've got to add a little bit more um, texture. By the way, I'm using a Tamiya Potty for this. Let me just put them down there. I'll show you. This, this tummy of putty. It dries very quickly, but you can get a good uh, sort of rough texture to it, so it's quite useful that way. So that's his head and his head gear. Pretty much finished. Here's his body. Now I did. Um, let's see. Let me zoom in a bit. I'll be able to. If you look, let's see if I can. Over there another bit. His coat tails have these little uh, um, pairs of axes on. They were very tiny. They're about the tiniest parts I put on any model kit, in, as far as I can remember. Again, you can see the paper straps and so on that are on there. Yeah, maybe that's a better view, more in focus. They're not 100% straight because I couldn't really see see them really. When you put a bit of glue down and everything and um, this white plastic is shining so much. And he's also got the same crossed axes on his uh, shoulders. Uh, what I've got to do is uh, put some more glue on those to make sure they 
shoulders, on his forearms, his, well not his forearms, his biceps and thereabouts. And I've got to make sure they're sitting down flat, okay, because they're badges really. Okay, anyway, that's just a quick progress report. Um, this is not the easiest figure in the world to uh, put together. Um, I think this is probably why Hysterix gets went out of business. You'll see that I've swapped his hands. Those hands had great meaty hands on. For horned hands, let's hope that they, uh, they come out okay. Yeah, paper straps. Okay, um, I'll come back to you uh, shortly and uh, we'll see how we're getting on. Okay. Hey again, as you can see, I've applied this uh, surfacing primer to the guy's head. It hasn't completely uh, covered up the um, uh, florist wire that I used for the cords. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to paint over that with the uh, some, um, I think, German camouflage black brown paint just to see how it goes. Um, then I can, uh, well, we'll see what I might have to do after that. Okay, back in a minute. Okay, here's the paint I'm going to use just to see how this uh, covers up this figure. Some of that out. I'm going to use this complete rubbish brush. If you can see this, okay. Normally I would um, spray paint anything like this, but as the bare skin is basically the colour approaching black, dark brown black, and his uh, some of his hair, beard, and face or flesh colored or some variation on that that I didn't want to spread because uh, the colors are just too different I don't want to get too much paint on these cords because again they're they're going to be a much lighter color golden color I must say this paint is covering up nicely. It's doing pretty good. You can see there. It doesn't usually. At least I don't find it does. It may need several coats, but I don't think so in this case. This plume is going to be red, I think. So we won't do that with a black brown either.
I'm not being too careful now. Because we can, uh, this is of course paint, so if we make a mistake or put the paint someplace we don't really want it, to just go back and paint it again. So it looks like this um, Mr. Surfacer has at least produced a pretty good uh, base coat for our head. That's how it uh, looks on his body. You can see, for example, my. Uh, And get it to zoom in. Shows up some of those little axes and things I was showing you earlier. They've come out a bit clearer. Okay, I'll stop it there for now. Okay, back again. What do I do? This time I'll show you that uh, I bought these pens uh, ages ago, years ago. Um, people said they were very good. Uh, I tried them several times. Uh, I couldn't get them to work at all. Couldn't uh, get any use out of them. And as you can see, they're, uh, they're very separate. Could never get a smooth color or a well, I just couldn't use them at all. They were no good to me. So they've been sitting in a cupboard for uh, years. Uh, and now that I've bought the um, this Vortex mixer, I'm going to just try them out again and see if... Uh, See if this is going to make a difference because with these paints you had to sort of mix them for about an hour to get any kind of coverage at all from what at least I did anyway maybe there's a better way of doing it but I don't know what it is okay this is the uh, basic flesh color so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna try that on his hands and face and uh, I'll, I'll show you that and I'll get back to you. <laughs> okay, basic flesh colour. Yeah, doesn't look too bad coming out of the uh, bottle. I'm just using a this old Series 7 brush. Okay, there you can, uh, you can see his face, hopefully that's, uh, that's in focus, is it? Okay. Not really covering very well. Then again, this um, 
primer paint that I've used. It does look as if it's a bit uh, shiny. So maybe I'm going to need several coats. Although to be honest, I don't really like having to do several base coats of the colour. I to at least be able to get the first coat on where it's a good coverage, it doesn't have to be perfect or anything. But where it's gonna give me a a reasonable base for the the next application. And I wouldn't say this is it. No. Nope. It doesn't look very good. You can see how that looks. Mm, at the moment I'll give it about 1 out of 10. May not stay that way. I'm going to paint his hands, hopefully that's uh, that in focus. Put the camera off to one side when I'm doing this. Okay, now for um, paint application on his hands, I'm going to again give it uh, 1 out of 10, I'd say. Maybe it'll dry better, but uh, it looks pretty pathetic at the moment. Have another look at his face. Sure and focus. Looks a bit better now that it's dried out slightly. Okay, I'll give it another little. Well, actually, let me just check the bottle. Let's see if there's any. Let's see what does it say on here? Acrylic water pens, maximum color tends to follow for brush and airbrush, all surfaces. Shape before use. No special instructions on there or anything. So uh, again, we're left with that, uh, not great. Color application. Okay, well, we'll have another look again later, thanks. Uh, 
Hi again. This is the uh, result of my uh, testing out this uh, scale 75 pence. What are they called? Scale color. They're from scale 75. Anyway, I, I put um, three coats of paint on this guy. Looks like the paint's cracked a bit there, but okay, we'll see. So it's, it looks okay now, after three coats. That's his head. Let's see. Here are his hands. Let's see if I can get it to focus. These are replacement hands. I replaced them with the had great big gross hands, I replaced them with hornet hands. It's a bit pale looking in the middle there. And I'll be painting over all of these, etc. So, just show you that first. Then uh, let's uh, zoom out. We're back on normal. Uh, this is going to be the last video in this little series because um, Although the figure is still uh, unassembled, like this is head and this head gear, this is his um, obviously this is his torso and legs. Uh, I've put the straps on for the backpack and everything. Um, this is his musket. I put a paper uh, carrying sling on it. Okay, that's a. Uh, Covered it with varnish to uh, um, make it make it uh, fall naturally. Oh, just by the way, um, just in case you're wondering what kind of paper I'm using, it's a uh, paper from these little bank statements because it's uh, very thin. It's a sort of semi. Uh, it's not shiny, but it's um, has a sheen to it. It's a slight sheen. Okay, and it uh, seems, it doesn't tear. This is quite tough paper. Anyway, it seems to work. Oh, uh, that's what I've been using. These little bank statement things. Those are the things you get out of the cash machine. Uh, other little thing I thought I'd show you, which I came across, is these are the instructions again. And if you look, for example, Here's this little bit there. There are far more bits on this sprue. Make sure that it's uh, in focus. There are far more bits on this sprue than there are on here. So I worked it out that what they're showing you here is all the bits you're gonna need for this figure. And then they don't show you other bits that you won't need. There are also spare parts on here. So there's like an extra set of axes for um, uh, his shoulder, his arm, uh, but uh, you, if you don't lose any, then you don't need them, they're spare. Okay, and also for example, um, well anyway, other other sprues like this, they, they, there's a parts attached here, but you don't use them for this model, so they're not shown on here. Um, I don't know if that's of any use to anybody when they're building one of these kits, but um, I only just noticed that um, when I was halfway through. All right, I've done the straps, done that. Uh, the painted on this kit, let's just remind ourselves. I mean, he's, uh, he's very well decked out, isn't he? But if you look, like, say, here, that's going to be fairly difficult to paint. And there, and obviously he's got the same, this stripe here on that arm as well, but inside it'd be a bit difficult to um, to get to it uh, with all the accoutrements. And here as well, once I put the spare axe head on and the um, sword and bayonet, it could be a bit hard to um, perhaps paint all this bit, and especially under there. So I'm going to be painting that first before I put it all on. Same with the backpack, etc. Okay. So 
this is then well here 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 is the backpack and uh, the other bits and pieces the uh, backpack apron axe um spare axe head bayonet and uh a sword but that has to be cut off these have uh, been uh, primed so okay um that i think is everything so he's ready for painting really and then final assembly so hopefully i'll see you then all right uh, if you do like this video don't forget to like and subscribe i'd really appreciate it and uh, it would do the channel some good as well thanks very much see you next time bye